recently I've been trying to spend a lot more time with myself, just listening to my own mind and kind of getting in touch with myself. <laughs> that sounds weird. Not in that way. In kind of like this de deep kind of way, because I found that a lot of my attachments have been to all these external things and ever since I could remember as a kid, I was always looking to other people to kind of give me an answer to give me a way to give me some sort of co confirmation, you know, and this brings me to childhood, you know, when we're ki kids, when we're young, we're very impressionable and everything that happens in that time has a great effect on us and has a lasting impact. And the more that I've kind of done work on myself and tried to think about where the things, thoughts that I have come from and what I do, like where does it come from? A lot of it's from childhood. And some of the things, they may not seem extreme, but they do have an effect on us, like little things, you know, they can all kind of add up and then add to this kind of belief. And then you kind of like store up these files that are kind of reaffirming these sorts of beliefs. And as a kid, you know, you're very impressionable. And I realized that my childhood was, was kind of rocky, which is why I've experienced so much doubt in my life, so much instability, because at times, you know, it'd be quite strict and you have to do this. But then all of a sudden I'd get love and attention for, for some random reason. And then at other times I'd be getting yelled at and told, yelled at and that sort of thing. And then that's like, it was so turbulent, you know? And then even something like having younger brothers, you know, when, cause I'm the oldest of four and then having other brothers, you know, like I was, t I was about two when my first other brother came along. And when you're that age, you've had all of the attention on you. You've had all the attention and love and care. And then all of a sudden there's someone else and they need all this love and care. And you don't realize as a kid, but you start to get pushed to the side. And then I had another brother when I was four and then you get kind of pushed even more to the side. And the way that they treat the first kid is always different because as parents, they're anxious, you know, they're like, oh, how do we do this? How do we go about this? You know, we don't know what this is. And they get really anxious and really strict about it. But as they get used to it and they have other kids, they become more and more lax. And when we think back to childhood, you know, how our parents kind of brought us up, what sort of situation they had. I've found myself wanting to hate my parents even, to want to blame them for lots of my issues and circumstances that I have now that are not very ideal. And of course they do have some part of the blame, some part of the responsibility, but it's up to me because this is my life now and I have to kind of work through that and realise, oh, these, this kind of happened in my childhood and that wasn't ideal, but I've got to accept that and acknowledge, acknowledge that so then I can have a clearer map of myself and my life and understand myself better and move forward. And I could do this just on the level of look at my childhood and then think, oh, well, this is why I'm like that. I should blame my parents. But then they've had some sort of childhood, some sort of upbringing that's influenced their decisions, which is why they've gone on to do things like this. And if you look at it like that, then I can... I can see it from a bigger perspective, you know, I'm not blaming, I'm not judging, I'm not condemning them because, you know, they had a difficult upbringing as well, they had a totally different upbringing and they just tried to do their best, you know, they did whatever they could. And, you know, without that, even though some of the experiences aren't great, without that I wouldn't be where I am, what I'm doing now. And looking back on it, I am grateful for some of those things because I wouldn't be here, I wouldn't be questioning these things, I wouldn't be looking deeper into it and I wouldn't be so aware of the impact that you can have on kids and thinking in the future. I wouldn't be so excited in the future to have my own kids because I think that would be something great to see all of the effects that childhood had on me and then try and do my best to mitigate those kind of mistakes that I've made and try and give my kids a better life than what I did and that I can work on myself and get rid of those things so that when I do have kids, you know, I can try and be a good father. I can try and be a really good parent and cultivate these kids in a really good environment so that they can go on and have, live better lives and have much better esteem and that sort of thing. But of course, you know, there's going to be something wrong with what I'm going to do. You know, it's not going to be perfect. And this is how I'm going to tie into rules. 
which is something that I've been thinking of recently because like I said, I was always looking for external answers based on my childhood. And because of that, I've became very attached to YouTube and finding other people, gurus or teachers or whatever, or just people that seem confident on YouTube to kind of find their answers attached to it and then find a way kind of forward. And I realized that this was actually um, a very bad attachment. It wasn't very healthy because whenever I feel anxious, whenever I feel doubtful in myself, which was quite often because I wasn't allowing myself to kind of delve into that and find an answer for myself. I was always externalizing it and finding someone else to give, give me the answer. And whenever I felt anxious, whenever I felt unease, then I'd go to YouTube, but then there was this kind of underlying belief like, oh, this is helping me. This is, this is giving me what I want. And when your brain convinces you that something is good, you should really look at it and question it. Like, is this actually good? Is this actually helping me? Because sometimes it's going to be, or oftentimes it's going to be to your detriment. It's kind of trying to keep the identity, the ego that it has at the moment and keep that identity alive. And I realized that I needed to cut that part out of myself to become more introspective. <laughs> so how does this tie into rules? So I was thinking of rules before, cause I was thinking, why do we have one career? Why do we only have one thing? Because it seems very, very rigid, you know, like why do we only have to have one thing? And I was thinking about it in, so think about like having, having one friend, having only one person to speak to, to have, to satisfy all your needs in life, all of your emotional needs, all of your intellectual needs, your physical needs, your sexual needs, your spiritual needs in one person. And I thought, well, that would kind of get boring because then you only have one person and you're kind of just like in this kind of echo chamber and having one thing is kind of limiting in this kind of way because you don't have much variety and could even if one person could satisfy all of those needs in you, you know, would it be worthwhile? And then it's kind of got me into rules. Like we get set in these one ways, in these one rigid ways. For example, um, what was I thinking of? So with rules, you know, we look at health or these other things that are good for us, you know, like for example, don't hit women. All right. So this is going to sound really weird. Okay. So that's kind of like a rule, you know, don't hit women, especially for men, you know, don't ever hit a woman. But what if this woman is trying to kill someone? What if this woman is a murderer and she's crazy going on a rampage? Do you just go, oh, I'm not going to hit her. I'm just going to let her go around and kill people. You know, I'm going to try and console her and talk to her and maybe that'll work. And if it doesn't, well, then I'm just going to die. That kind of seems silly, doesn't it? You know, like the right thing to do there would be to just knock her out, you know, and to do that, you have to hit her. And this kind of sounds bad, like, Oh no, we have to have the rule, don't hit women. You know, we, we can't break the rule. We have to be in this strict kind of way. We have to have these rules or else we're gonna be crazy and we're gonna go everywhere and then the world's gonna be a chaotic mess and everyone's just gonna be going out there raping and killing and stealing and all this crap. But that's only if it's set on the intention of um, a bad intention, you know, of people getting the most out of them for themselves rather than them thinking of other people. And also these kind of rules also underlyingly apply or implicate that they don't trust you, you know, like having cameras in, in stores implies that it's waiting for someone to steal something. It's like daring you, it's like, doesn't trust you. You know, it's like, oh, we're going to watch you, you know, you may not steal, but we think you're going to do it. And that kind of puts the implication on you, even though you weren't really, maybe you weren't even thinking of stealing anything, but now it's kind of like, oh, I'm being watched. I'm not trusted here. And that's where rules can be very limiting. And I also thought of this with working out, you know, like people may say, oh, squats are really good for you. Squats are great for you. What if you have a broken leg? Like, why would you do squats if you have a broken leg? And this is where it kind of got me to the conclusion that we can't live by rules because rules are meant to be broken. Life is supposed to break the rules, you know, life will go against the rules and we've got to kind of flow with that and have, be very aware and conscious and choose 
what things we're going to be doing because if we live by rigid rules then we're we're not really living a life we're living some formula we're basically robots and we're, we're not robots we're fluid and we should utilize that a lot more rules also create like these expectations and expectations can be really bad like to tie us back into childhood you know i was someone that was told that i was very i was smart and that i would go on to do things you know there's kind of like the, the, like this underlying belief that i was going to be responsible for a lot of things i had a responsibility put on me at a young age and there's kind of like this underlying be belief and underlying kind of sense from other people that i should go on to do something big that i should do something because i'm smart and because i'm a kind caring person and these expectations can really fuck with you because all of these things that people were feeding into me, all of these kind of ideas that people were putting in my mind just made me feel so much insecure because it made me think that my dreams were never big enough and that I always had to set my sights higher and that the, the more that they told me this, the more that I had to kind of do. And that was denying what I had in the moment, which was uh, <laughs> realizing that I'm human and that, and that I make mistakes and that I may not be perfect and I may not be able to do all these things that people kind of expect of me and put on me. And if I'm bound by these expectations, these rules and these limitations, and I'm not able to break free and be fluid as a human and actually connect with people because this kind of may be narcissistic because underlying there was this belief that I was kind of better than other people, you know, like I was supposed to do more. so. Why the fuck am I working at a cafe serving coffees? Why the fuck am I talking to these people? They wouldn't understand what I'm talking about. And that's not really a great way to live because then you isolate yourself even more. And then, you know, that's not a very happy and fulfilling way to live. I feel like that's all I have to say. My mind's kind of gone blank. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.